Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Edit Place. Today, we're going to be talking all about how I kind of customize my editing workflow to be as efficient and seamless as possible, utilizing various pieces of hardware. And so I'm quickly just going to kind of go in and I've already edited this video from the other day, but I'm just going to grab kind of the A roll and show you guys how I would go through and what various hotkeys and buttons on uh, these different keyboards I utilize to make my editing faster. I wanna talk about what hardware we have on the desk here. So of course, I have just a traditional Magic Keyboard. A lot of people hate on them, but I like them. And then of course I have the Apple Magic Trackpad 2. This I primarily just use for gestures. I don't really use it for the mouse functionality. So really just like a five finger gesture to bring up all of my apps. Um, as well as when I'm on the timeline, sometimes I'll use it to scrub around a timeline really fast since it can be faster than the mouse. But yeah, this is probably the least utilized, but for the couple of use cases that I use it, it's the fastest one, so I keep it on the desk. And then I have the Logitech MX Master uh, 3. I always love the MX Master. To me, it is the most ergonomical, best feeling mouse that I've ever used. And now on to the two editing keyboards. Here we have the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. So over here is actually the Torbox. They were awesome and sent this to me earlier this year and I've been using in the past a handful of months to get like a real feel for it. And actually I was going to pin these two together, kind of do a versus or like which one should you buy, one or the other but I slowly found for my use case, it's actually majorly beneficial to have both because their biggest pros is the other one's cons, if that makes any sense. The speed editor, because it is directly made for DaVinci Resolve, nothing is customizable on it that I know of, at least yet, maybe they'll do something with software. Icons and the buttons you see here, whatever it says on the button, is what that button does. I can't go in and remap the uh, keys to do something differently. If I go under the preferences here, so yeah, under control panels, we can see for a speed editor, it literally just says battery 99%. For the buttons it has, the log wheel, it's the absolute best. Over here, I have various wheels and dials that I could utilize, like this one, for example, is set to scrub the timeline, but as you can see, on the timeline here, I'm moving my finger pretty fast and it is going very slow because this wheel is going in the direction. If I go to the right, it's basically just a mapped version of hitting the right key a bunch of times. And then going to the left is just like hitting the left arrow key a bunch of times. So it's not going to change. However, if I use uh, the speed editor key, it's working with DaVinci Resolve. And so now, I can go to jog, which is going to go at a really nice pace. This is where I stay at the majority of the time, or I can hit the uh, scroll. This is going to make large movements. So if I need to really go through a long uh, take very quickly, scroll is going to be faster than jog. Um, and then shuttle is basically like a playback. So if I go a little bit to the right, it's going to be real time. If I go even further, we go two times, eight times, whatever. Um, this one I don't use that much. There's a nice little yawn for me. But honestly, I would buy the speed. If I used nothing else on the speed editor, scroll wheel is worth it enough. Just keep in mind, though, this does not work in Final Cut or Premiere or anything. Again, that I know of, if anyone has like hacked it to work in the other editors, please let me know because that would be really cool. So now let's talk about the tour box because this essentially is just like hotkey heaven. It's basically a bunch of different wheels and dials and buttons of various different uh, sizes that you can completely customize. So if I open up the Torbox console here, uh, you can see that everything is mapped to a specific thing. And if you're curious about my exact mapping, then you can just pause the video around here and kind of screenshot and take a look at all this. Alrighty, so let's talk about uh, the features that I use most here. So when I first drop in a new A-roll clip here, this is where it usually takes the longest because you can have like a 40 minute, you know, record time. I don't know what point of the video it's at for you guys right now, but I'm already about 14 minutes in to recording this A-roll. So there's a lot of useless junk that gets cut out. All right, so one of the first things you've probably seen me do a bunch is I have this kind of scroll knob right here. 
um, linked to the timeline zooming in and zooming out. And then if I press it, it is zoomed to fit. And this, it, it's like second nature to me. I use this constantly. My goal is to utilize the mouse and this keyboard as little as possible once I start editing. So my hand positions go from here, which is normal computer use, to shifting pretty much right here for everything. And one thing that DaVinci Resolve doesn't do um, on the edit page that it does do on the cut page, you can see here that as I play it, the playhead always stays in the middle and then the clip kind of runs through it. Whereas on the edit place, there's sometimes where I like to just keep it kind of in the middle. And so what I find myself doing is if it gets like over here, um, if I'm like really zoomed in or something and it's kind of starting to go over there, I'll zoom out real quick, zoom back in, and it will always kind of put the playhead back um, in the center. And then I have this top bar button linked to play pause. And then again on here, I use the jog reel the majority of the time. Now when I get to actual cutting, um, on the speed editor, I tried to get into using this, but it was actually two or three keystrokes on here to do what I can do with one on here. So for example, if I want to uh, ripple delete, basically if I want to cut right here and remove this dead space and have this section of audio um, be connected to this last piece. On the speed editor, I have to hit um, split right there and then go to the end and then I have to split again. And then this section is highlighted. I can go to ripple delete and that moves that section. So again, you go split there, scroll, split, ripple, delete. Doesn't seem too bad until you realize what you can do on here. So I'm going to undo it, which I have these two smaller circle keys mapped to undo. Um, and then this is redo, of course. So I'm gonna undo that. And now you'll see how I would normally cut this. So what I do is on the left side here, there's another button and that is going to be a cut, just a straight cut, just like the split is right here. So I could use either, but since my hand's right here, my pinky just hits it. And then I go to the end and then to remove two of the keystrokes, essentially, I have this uh, set up to, I was bad at the terminology, but ripple delete like left. So I just hit that and you can see it moves it. So again, I make a cut there, go to the end, and just one button does what I would normally have to do with two buttons, split, ripple, delete. Whereas here, it's just ripple, delete. But I can also use it to uh, trim the other way, right? So if I want to trim the last couple um, things off here, again, I could split, but then I'd have to move this to highlight the next section and then ripple delete or I can save all the trouble go here and then I'm going to hit this button on the right and that's going to trim the end of the clip now other buttons that I use on here uh, sometimes is if I want to clean up the edges here make these a little closer sometimes I will use um, the roll the trim in and trim out just to kind of remove excess stuff. Again, I can go in and trim using these tools again, but sometimes it's a little bit, feels a little bit more refined uh, to use the roll, the slide, all that stuff. And I can use simple transitions if I want to, like if I need to put a cross dissolve right there, but it doesn't really make sense right there. However, um, at the beginnings and ends of pretty much all my videos, I have a fade in and fade out. So I just use cross dissolve there, adds it in. So it's a nice little shortcut, saves time from again, grabbing the mouse, dragging in a cross dissolve. And if you're not an editor, you may be like, it literally takes two seconds. Why are you spending all this money on hardware to do what takes two seconds? It's because we're doing this so much that those two seconds add up and over the course of like an eight hour edit, you can end up saving like an hour of time or something by utilizing this stuff. And when you do it for months, you really can get good at it. Now, this is something that I didn't do for years. And then shout out to Jackson Hayes, I believe, 
is the one I saw first do it. Um, and that is to basically watch your timeline at like 2x speed. And because there's a lot of talking going on and a lot of times you're editing right after recording. And so it's not like you forgot what you just said. And so if I see a big string of um, playback here that I know I didn't really mess up. Now I could just hit play and then watch this entire thing and watching it in real time, but you're losing so much valuable time. Again, you're going to take forever on an edit. And so what I have mapped here on this right little uh, keypad here is basically a shortcut for, I believe, C. Um, and so I hit that and now it's playing back at 2x speed. And again, I can stop, make a cut, do whatever I want to do, and then go right back to it. I can hit it again and go even faster and faster, crazy fast. But usually I just hit it once, do 2x speed. That way um, I can still understand what I'm saying. I can hear all the words, um, anything faster. And it's like, I might as well just be scrubbing around the timeline or anything. Now, the only other button that I have mapped on here that uh, I haven't really shown you is kind of because it's the same as the ripple delete button right here. So if there's some reason that I wouldn't utilize one of these two and I just needed a clip straight up gone. So let's say uh, this clip was standalone in between two other clips. Um, then I have, there's a very small button right to the bottom left of this scroll wheel. And I hit that, it's literally ripple delete. To me, I don't mind having two buttons that do the same thing. Cause sometimes my muscle memory will just go to one or the other. Um, because my hands are here, sometimes uh, my left hand will just automatically hit ripple delete there. Sometimes my right hand will hit ripple delete there. And for me, it's like I have all the buttons I need mapped out. I have extra buttons, so I might as well just kind of map them to uh, do the same thing. So whatever. And then I do definitely use the nice big uh, in and out uh, points for here, especially if I'm only and I'll put certain sections. This also brings to a good point when I'm doing B-roll. Um, and I'm going to be, let me actually jump into another project that I actually have B-rolling because these videos, I don't really have much B-roll. So this was the latest video from my main channel. If you want to see that, go check it out in the link in the description. Here I can bring up my source and timeline viewers. And on the speed editor, you have a source and timeline uh, button, which is really nice. So again, this is primarily made for the cut page. It's even more integrated, but I utilize the edit page. So a lot of this stuff, like all this stuff has to do with multicam uh, things and up here is sync bins. I'm gonna talk about this stuff in a second, but like the close up tool, that stuff only really utilizes on the cut page um, and multicam stuff. I don't really utilize much. Maybe I should, I don't know. But uh, anyway, let's go over here and bring up like this B-roll clip. So I can hit my timeline and you can see how this is red over here. And if I hit source button, you can now see that my source uh, viewer is active. Um, yeah, so I'm in my timeline, but then without moving my mouse, I can hit source and I can be in whatever clip. Now, if I'm on the edit page, I can actually scroll through my entire source material, um, which can be really nice. So if I go to source here, you can see that all of these little lines are the individual clips. So I'm on this clip right now, but if I go over it, then now I'm in another clip. And so without ever having to select the other clip in my media bin, this can be really beneficial. But again, the cut page, I just, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, I really just like the edit page. So I have to move the mouse and select whatever clip I want to drag in. Um, but once I have it selected here, I can make sure I'm in my source and then I'm going to grab a specific section. So maybe I want this pan. So I'll go where I want, hit my in and hit my out. And then, of course, you have all of your different insert shortcuts. So you can do place on top, which will just place on top of wherever you are on the timeline. Um, you can do append, which, of course, will place it at the end. 
in all those various inserts there. So I use those uh, once I start adding B-roll and everything. But yeah, that's pretty much all of my uh, shortcuts. Hopefully I was in depth enough to show you kind of what the workflow looked like and how I utilize these various pieces of software. Um, but also hopefully this video wasn't super boring or anything. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, of course, the links will be in the description down below. You can check them out. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.